Hello everyone and welcome to this new gen webinar entitled Take the Hassle Out of Nanoparticle Prep and Characterization with Big Tuna and Stunner. This webinar was made possible through sponsorship from Unchained Labs. As always, I'm your host, Jeff Bogaliskis, Technical Editor for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology News, which is celebrating its 40th year, bringing you the latest information on the most cutting edge tools and technology that life scientists use to keep their research moving ahead. Biomanufacturers are continually generating newer and more complex nanoparticle carrier systems as part of their therapeutic pipelines. These nanomedicines are being produced using an array of molecules such as proteins, lipids, and polymers, and they provide a unique collection of challenges during scale up with sample integrity and recovery being among the most difficult. Thankfully, our sponsor for today's presentation, Unchained Labs, has developed a line of analytical equipment that can address scientists' needs while maintaining speed and accuracy during critical production steps, something our presenter for today is going to tell us more about in just a few moments. But first, before we get the presentation started, let's meet our speaker for today's event. Nellis Dennis is a product manager for Lunatic and Stunner at Unchained Labs, where he's been with the company for a little over four years now. Nellis learned about the inner workings of the product line when he started with the company as a product support engineer. And today he's gonna to tell us more about how Unchained's Bink Tuna and Stunner lines can work together to help buffer exchange and quantify nanoparticle payloads. Immediately following Nellis's presentation, we're gonna have our Q&A session as usual. And I wanna remind the audience to submit questions for Nellis. To do that, it's really, really simple. All you need to do is click the Ask a Question tab on the right-hand side of your screen, type in your question, and then hit Submit. You can do this at any time during the presentation today, so don't hesitate, send them in whenever you think of a question. Uh, now that we're all up to speed on that, though, and we know how to submit a question, please don't hesitate to do so. And without any further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Nellis. Thank you for that introduction. Hi everyone, welcome to this webinar. Take the hassle out of nanoparticle prep and characterization with Bactuna and Stunner. Let's focus in on our nanoparticle team. Bactuna takes the hassle out of prepping your samples while Stunner offers an easier way to characterize your nanoparticles. Let's talk a bit about Stunner first. I'm sure everyone knows the famous phrase, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get from Forrest Gump. And he's right. Without biting them open, there's really not a way to know what is inside. Nanoparticles are very similar. Once made, you know what you want to be in there, but it's difficult to know if it's actually present and what its concentration is without breaking them down. Nanoparticles are booming, and they come in a lot of different forms. Liposomes, lipid nanoparticles, solid lipid nanoparticles, lipid nanoemulsions, polymeric nanocarriers, and many, many more. Particles with their own unique tweak and proprietary content for many different applications. In gene therapy, for example, also cancer treatment, vaccine development, and other biopharma. One of the reasons for this abundance of options is the fact that a variety of payloads can be encapsulated. Of course, making nanoparticles an option in a lot of areas. The payload can be RNA, DNA, protein, or practically any other active pharmaceutical ingredient. And then there's a range of options for each category. For example, for RNA, it can be different types, like messenger RNA, but also small interfering RNA. There are a lot of properties that are important during development of nanoparticles. What particle shape you want and what size they should have, which lipids or other components will be used and in which ratios. Choosing your API payload, choosing potential surfactants, what charge the particle should have, in which buffer and which pH it should be in. Now, once the particle is made, two important questions come up as well. What is my particle's payload concentration and does it have the size I want it to have? 
Nanoparticle size is critical to the performance of a successful drug. So when you've got lots of buffers, formulations, and payload constructs to test, you want to be gathering size data on everything. Stunner tackles these two questions simultaneously. With our nanoparticle app, Stunner delivers low volume, high throughput DLS without the need for dilutions to get to the size and PDI data you need. On the same two microliter sample, Stunner quantifies your total payload concentration, whether it's RNA, DNA, protein, or another API, without the need for any reagents, standards, or fluorescent dyes. All this is done in a 96 well plate based format that powers high throughput analysis of nanoparticle samples, fresh out of mixing. Stunner contains two technologies to read each sample, UVVIS for concentration and DLS for sizing. Simply add in two microliter of nanoparticle sample into the input well, and it's pulled into the microfluidic reservoir. At this step, the sample can sit for up to two hours before reading, with no evaporation. After the plate is loaded into the instrument, the circuit is read first when empty and that will remove any absorbance contribution from the plastic. Then a pump applies a small vacuum which moves the sample into the microcuvettes to be read. Because the circuit has fixed path lengths, it can make very precise and accurate reads. Stunner's nanoparticle applications combine both technologies on a sample to deliver total payload quantification and low volume size and PDI results. Here we can see exactly what sample loading looks like with the help of some fluorescein and a black light. In two wells, we've already added two microliter of fluorescein. As you can see, to load another sample, you simply add in two microliter into that input well and the sample wicks into the plate. Standard DLS gives you the high throughput power to gather the size and size distribution data on 96 samples in less than an hour. Here we're looking at intensity distribution data for a whole plate of LMPs, with the average diameter noted as the value below each distribution. These mRNA LMPs had a hydrodynamic diameter of 79 nanometers plus or minus 1%, and a PDI of 0.14 plus or minus 0.02. Standard will provide DLS results just how you like it, with hydrodynamic diameter and PDI but now you no longer have to be limited by DLS data that has to be manually gathered for about a dozen pieces of data in a day. Now DLS can keep up with LMP samples as fast as you can make them, allowing you to run as many replicates as you want. The most famous product with nanoparticles are for sure the latest mRNA vaccines. An important factor is of course the dose. Dye-based quantification is multi-step, requires dilutions, used costly dyes and standards, requires hours of analysis and hands-on lab work, and it also includes breaking down the precious particle you just made. There needs to be a better way. And you could try to quant what UVVIS, but nanoparticle solutions have tons of turbidity, so traditional UVVIS approaches fail. Until stunner. Load up a nanoparticle sample into a stunner sample well, and you'll quickly see it being wicked into the serpentine reservoir and held there. To read the plate, stunner will pump the sample into 0.1 and 0.7 millimeter path length microcuvettes for UVVIS absorbance measurements. When reading nanoparticles, the combination of stunner's two fixed path length microcuvettes provides precision and broad dynamic range. Since nanoparticles are typically very turbid, cloudy samples, the short path lengths are needed so that light can pass through and enable absorbance measurements. Now let's take a look at some RNA LMP samples. The empty LMPs create a whole lot of signal that look like, that look like absorbance, but it's actually turbidity. And usually it isn't helpful and just gets in the way because all that turbidity makes quantifying with traditional UVVIS almost impossible, and total payload quant by UVVIS is normally a big challenge. For example, if we squint at the full curve, we can see the RNA bump at about 260 nanometer, but the difference is pretty small. To analyze this, we have to separate out the signal from the turbidity, 
from the signal from the LNP absorbance due to RNA and other LNP components. On the left, we have the raw data again, and on the right, Stenner has used our unmixed algorithms to isolate the impact of turbidity and remove it. This is shown by the black line indicating total signal, and the gray line indicates, indicates the contribution from turbidity. The remainder is in green and in blue. Green is the isolated signal from RNA, and that will be our total RNA concentration. Blue is the uv absorbance signal from other components in our sample. UV absorbing lipids, excipients, and buffer components. Stenner separates the contribution of those three groups, turbidity, RNA, and other components, to quantify total RNA concentration. This all in less than a minute per sample from just two microliters, and without any dyes, reagents, or complicated workflow. Stenner's RNA concentrations agree closely with the total messenger RNA concentration determined by Ribogreen. A twofold dilution series of firefly luciferase mRNA LNPs showed highly linear results down to 1.2 microgram per milliliter. The error bars here are plus or minus one standard deviation. As mentioned, Stenner lets you run 96 samples in an hour. Here we can see 96 replicates of RNA LNP where the green is the RNA concentration, also mentioned below the graphs, and gray is the turbidity signal. The coefficient of variation is a spectacular 1.54% over these 96 complicated samples. Now, RNA LNPs are, of course, not the only nanoparticles out there. As mentioned in the very start of this presentation, nanoparticles and nanomedicines have a broad area of applications. So let's take a look at some other potential payloads. While developing the perfect RNA or DNA nanoparticle, checking the effect of nitrogen to phosphate ratios is an important parameter. This ratio is a combination of the nitrogen found in the lipid formulation versus the phosphate from the sugar phosphate DNA or RNA backbone. In the following experiment, different DNA LNP formulations were tested. We kept the lipids and so the nitrogen at the same concentration, and we decreased the DNA and so the phosphate concentration by twofold and fivefold, this all giving us NP ratios of 5, 10, and 50. Our three different NP samples were run in quadruplicate on Stunner, and immediately quant and size data were delivered. On the left, we see the decreasing DNA concentrations, and on the right is the average diameter for each formulation. Stunner can help you screen your formulations and speed up your search for the best NP ratio. As a next experiment, a dilution series of LNPs loaded with lysozyme showed highly linear results. Whether or not you are measuring a pure analyte or an active ingredient inside a nanoparticle, Stunner will deliver accurate and precise data that is linear across its complete range. And as mentioned a couple of times, nanomedicine is hot. A new, unique, and proprietary particles with their custom payload are developed rapidly. Teach Stunner all about the UV vis absorbance of your nanoparticle. Shown here is a setup in the software and its results, where Stunner allows you to create your own reference spectra, providing the possibility to set up your custom application and quantify exactly what you are interested in. And this is how it works for your unique particle. You've already shown Stunner what your pure API is, and it will deconvolute it from the raw spectrum to get you the result you need. Skip the disruption step and quantify any payload, whether it's RNA, DNA, a protein, or whatever small molecule. Stunner makes quantification crazy simple to free you from complicated workflows, costly dyes, and wasteful standard curves. And here are the results in our analysis software. A dilution series of a custom nanoparticle is shown. In the center, you can see the absorbance spectrum overlaying from all the dilutions. Bottom left is the indication on how good the payload and particle fitting is on the measured spectrum. 
And the three graphs on the right are the correlation function, the intensity distribution, and the mass distribution from DLS. This all allows you to co quickly compare samples on concentration and DLS data, exactly the two things researchers in this area need. We also have IQOQ procedures available and Stellar software is 21 CFR Part 11 compliant with full audit trail and electronic signature capabilities. And for labs doing manufacturing, quality assurance and quality control, Stellar has a performance verification. These tests meet the United States Pharmacopeia and the European Pharmacopeia guidelines for UVV spectrometers. The tests and all necessary calculations are handled automatically by the software. So that is how Standard delivers label-free, standard-free and hassle-free nanoparticle characterization to the whole nanoparticle world. So always know exactly what you got in your chocolates without the need to buy it in them first. Okay. That was all for characteriz characterization of your samples, but there are plenty of challenges while prepping your samples as well. That is where Bectuna comes in. Removing solvent and concentrating LMPs might look something like this. We have an aqueous phase that contains the nucleic acid, phthalo, in green. And then we have an organic phase that contains the lipids in blue. During production, those are mixed and we have an emulsion that contains both aqueous and organic solvents mixed in there. It is critical to take that through some buffer exchange to clean things up so it's just the buffer we want with our LMPs. At the same time, it would be ideal to also dilute or concentrate the samples as needed. Buffer exchange is essential. You need it to get your biologics into a buffer where it's going to be happy and stable, but manual methods just don't cut it. They are labor intensive and tedious. Dialysis is on one part easy. You can just start it and walk away. But it almost always dilutes your sample and so you need an additional concentration step. Using centrifugation filters, on the other hand, is fast. It's at the volume you want, but you can't walk away. You need to go back and forth to the centrifuge and lose precious time. And running multiple samples at a time is just a pain. Now, tangential flow filtration is of course the most high tech of these three, but you can't just walk up and use it. It is complicated, it has expensive parts, and it works only with larger sample volumes. So meet Victuna. Victuna is a fully automated, versatile buffer exchange system to help you power through buffer exchange, sample concentration, or sample cleanup. It can handle up to 96 samples in one single run with volumes as low as 100 microliters, up to 48 milliliters. It is designed to be super simple to use. All you need is 30 minutes of prep time to design the experiment and to prep the deck. Bigtuna will take care of all, ex all the exchanges automatically, so you can walk away and come back to finished samples. Bigtuna uses Unfilter as the key part of its sample prep. Unfilters have a regenerated cellulose molecular weight cutoff filter at their bottom, so that enables filtration in a plate-based format. Unfilters are available in different molecular weight cutoffs options, so they're perfect for any sample type, and they're available in different formats, so it can work with a wide range of sample numbers and volumes. Bigtuna works like this. For every cycle, the volume in each unfiltered well is measured through a non-contact ultrasonic sensor. Then, positive pressure filters sample through the molecular weight cutoff filter, while orbital mixing of the plate means the sample doesn't crowd at the membrane. Sample volume is measured again, and then Bigtuna adds new buffer into each well. Repeat until you reach your desired person exchanged and you're done. On the left, you can see dead end filtration. In dead end filtration, you're concentrating your sample at the membrane surface as you're exchanging. That process slows down the flow rate and creates a concentration gradient within the sample, 
that could have a couple of effects, like clogging and fouling the membrane. It could aggregate, since your sample is at a higher concentration at the membrane than it normally would be. To avoid these issues, Bictuna does an orbital mixing process, which can be seen on the right. That orbital mixing process ensures that the sample stays uniform in the well and that flow is consistent and uniform during the exchange process. So it doesn't only make the exchange faster, it also makes sure your sample is handled in the best possible way. Automating the process gives more control to the operator to ensure the exchange works the way they want it to work. For example, percent removal. Bictuna lets users decide how fast or how slow they want their buffer exchange rate to be with a percent removal control. This ranges from 10 to 75%. Second thing would be percent exchange. Bictuna lets users specify when the exchange is completed. This means how much buffer to replace, and it can be up to 99%. And then the final concentration. Bictuna can concentrate the sample after exchange or do concentration only. Bictuna can concentrate your sample up to 100 fold. The workflow starts with 48 milliliter of sample that can be split across wells in your sample reservoirs. And your goal is to concentrate those samples down to about 0.5 ml of final volume. Bactuna will concentrate sample in an unfiltered well since it continues to push buffer through the bottom of the unfilter and refill it from those four reservoir chambers. In this case study, we'll take a quick look at how Bictuna exchanges LMPs in 10% ethanol into PBS. Bictuna will also concentrate LMPs threefold at the same time. All this is done with a 100 kilodalton bulker weight cutoff unfiltered 24. Bictuna was able to handle all this work in about 90 minutes, and you can see the results here. Our sample concentration was successful, taking the RNA concentration from 26.1 micrograms per ml to 83.5 micrograms per ml, while maintaining good encapsulation efficiency, meaning RNA was not lost to sample lysis or aggregation. Our target volume was hit and our percent exchange value was hit as well, so we know we've gotten rid rid of more than rid of more than 99% of our previous ethanol containing buffer. So, that was a short overview of our nanoparticle tea. Bictuna makes prepping easier with automating time-consuming buffer exchange and cleanup. While Stunner's new nanoparticle applications give you the power to do low volume high throughput DLS while also using UVVIS to look at your total payload quant. And now I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks, Nellis. Really nice presentation, and we really appreciate you sharing all the information with us. I know the audience is going to enjoy that a lot and it's very useful. Uh, to those audience members who are out there listening, if you have a question for Nellis, don't hesitate. Send that in now. All you need to do is click the Ask a Question tab on the right hand side of your screen, type in your question, and Hit submit. Okay, our Q&A session is going to begin in just a moment, and we're going to try to get to as many of your questions as possible. So keep those questions coming and bear with us for just a moment as we transition into the Q&A session. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the Q&A session. We have a bunch of questions here for Nellis. Uh, let's get right to it. Nellis, the first question uh, an audience member would like to know, do you need to blank with an empty nanoparticle? Well, that is one of the great things. You actually don't. If you're using a, a default nanoparticle, the instrument will just take care of it and, and you can go from there. If, of course, you have a special custom nanoparticle um, that is absorbing, um, then you'll need to run it once um, so the instrument knows uh, how it looks like. 
But after that, you don't need to blank every single time you run that sample. So in essence, no. All right, thanks for that. Uh, the next question is an important one, depending on the types of samples you have. Uh, can you run samples containing ethanol on Stunner? Yes, um, our container model can handle up to 20% ethanol. So if they're coming out of however you're making them um, in a concentration 20% or lower, you can just take two microliter of that and run it. Um, if it's higher than 20%, you'll need to do some type of buffer exchange, which you'll do anyhow, but then Big Tuna can come in there. So um, we have all the options needed. All right, sorry about that. My page kind of got stuck there. Uh, next question from one of our audience members. Um, they say, I have a protein-based particle with DNA inside. Could we use Stunner for that? Um, yeah, so protein and DNA spectra are, are different enough, and so Stunner can easily deconvolute and so get your uh, DNA concentration out of your protein-based uh, particle uh, without problem where normal UVVs or traditional UVVs would just give you the full spectrum and you would have influence on your DNA concentration by the protein sample. Um, but Stunner can deconvolute and, and give you accurate results on your DNA concentration. All right, and the next question we have is, how does Big Tuna handle samples that flow differently? So Bictuna will adjust its cycle time to reflect the faster running samples. So the fast samples would never run dry. Um, but the operator can pause when, once the faster running samples uh, are done and remove, the, remove those finished ones and then let the other samples just uh, continue to exchange. All right, and another question that we have, an audience member would like to know, what's the largest volume that you can concentrate? So Bitcoin can concentrate up to 48 ml of lipid nanoparticles down to 450 microliters in two runs. So it will go from 48 to 8 ml and then from 8 ml to 450 microliters or anything in between whatever you want. Okay, great. Uh, our next question comes from Jack, who'd like to know, in your FLUC mRNA LMP, uh, the RNA is inside, uh, is, or sorry, is RNA is inside or outside nanoparticles? And will, you, will the UV have differences when the RNA is inside or outside? So UVVIS will gather the total amounts uh, of absorbance from coming from RNA, so it can't distinguish between what is inside or outside. Um, so there will be no difference there. So in essence, you wouldn't know, UVVIS can't tell you if it's inside or outside. Now, combining that with um, the DLS that will show you peak at the size you're expecting from your nanoparticle, you at least know you have the particles of the right size at the same time and your total RNA concentration. All right. Uh, our next question comes from Hannah, who would like to know, um, how can Stunner work with excipients like potassium sorbate or sucrose? Um, how does the empty LMP work? So it, it works. Um, you can, of course, tell Stunner uh, what it looked like. So whatever your excipient is, if it's absorbing in some kind of way, um, you just give Stunner the basic information. Um, for excipients like this, you would need to either uh, measure up the spectrum of those excipients and, and then tell Stunner those are in your sample or um, measure your total empty LMP in that case uh, and, and tell Stunner that's your empty LMP and what is inside. And then it will just use the spectrum um, that you just informed the instrument about. You only do that once and then all your next measurements Stunner will nicely um, deconvolute the absorbance from your particle versus what is inside. All right, great. And Hannah had a follow-up question, and she'd like to know, can Stunner and Big Tuna work with DOTAP? Um, I'm not 
completely sure about that, so I'll need to get back to you on that one. I, I, think, I think so, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Not a problem. We can always uh, answer that offline afterwards. Uh, the next question comes from John, who'd like to know, um, how was the N to P uh, ratio determined? Uh, was it by mass spec? Unfortunately, I, I'll, I'll need, I don't know the answer to that either because I didn't run the experiment. So I'll also need to ask um, our technician that ran the experiment uh, and know exactly how he did it. All right, fair enough. And it looks like we have time for one last question here. Um, our audience member would like to know, can you use Stunner for other carriers like AAV? Uh, yes. So we have a, a specific application for AAVs uh, called AAV Quant, where you can actually um, pretty much the same. It will uh, deconvolute um, the influence from the single-stranded DNA inside versus the protein capsid. And then it will give you, with that, it can give you titers, uh, so the total capsid titers, the full capsid titer, but also empty full ratios um, while also giving you size information. Um, and pretty much anything that absorbs, um, you you would be able to use Stunner um, so to get UVVs and, and DLS readings. All right, thank you very much for that. And with that, we've come to the end of our webinar. So I'd like to remind everyone that the webinar will be archived on the GEN website at genengnews.com for up to a year. So if you missed any parts of it, you can watch it again, or you can feel free to forward the link to any of your friends and colleagues who you think might be interested. We always recommend that. I'd like to thank Nellis again for his very informative presentation, and I'd like to thank you, the audience, for your attention and very thoughtful questions. A very special thanks to Unchained Labs for sponsoring this webinar. Hopefully we'll see you again at another GEN webinar in the near future. Everyone stay safe and healthy. Goodbye for now and get your vaccines.